you know, Canadians who are unvaccinated now cannot leave the country. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Why, why is that? And I'm, look, I got vaccinated and people took me to task for that. And I thought, all right, I'll get the damn vaccine. Here's the deal, guys. I'll get the vaccine. You fucking leave me alone. And did that work? No. So st stupid me. You know, that's how I feel about it. It's like, well, now I have to get tested for COVID when I come back into Canada. I have to get tested before I leave Canada. Now, you know, that might be the latter issue. That's an issue with the Americans. And, and so that's outside of the Canadian purview. But the restrictions to get back into Canada are even more stringent. It's like, well, why do you get the vaccine then if you're not going to leave me alone? And I don't think the evidence that unvaccinated or that vaccinated people are less contagious, let's say, I don't think it's very compelling. Yeah. So why are the vaccinated all of a sudden, the unvaccinated all of a sudden a danger? I'm Dave Rubin and joining me today is an author, a lecturer, a psychologist, and the world's preeminent lobster expert, Jordan Peterson, my old friend. Welcome back to the Rubin Report. Hi, Dave. So good to see you and to be doing this again. All right, here we go again. We've, we've done this a couple of times. I thought we'd do it a little differently this time instead of just me tossing you up for some questions. If we did a little kind of push and pull and churn through some of these ideas, but I guess where we start first is you're in Toronto, I'm in Los Angeles. We, we live in places that are seemingly really out of touch with a lot of the things we talk about. People ask me about that a lot. How's life in Toronto right now? Well, in relationship to the COVID restrictions, I talked to a senior advisor to one of the provincial governments a couple of weeks ago. He told me flat out that the COVID policy here is driven by nothing but opinion polls related to the popularity of the government. No science, no end game in sight, no real plan. And so what that means is that the, the pop part of the population that's most afraid of COVID, I know it's what 50% of Democrats believe that you have a 50% shot at getting hospitalized if you catch COVID and 25% of Republicans. And so I suspect it's similar in Canada. And so policy is being driven by people who are more afraid than they should be. And it's, well, it was a very disheartening conversation because I trust this guy and he, he knows what he's talking about. And so, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm cynical about governments exactly because cynicism is, it's a cheap shortcut to approximating wisdom, let's say. And you have to be judicious in your criticisms but I still found that extremely disheartening because I thought at least policies that I don't agree with, the restrictive policies, were at least driven by something remotely resembling a scientifically informed plan. And, and he was irate at what had been happening, enough to consider resigning. So it's pretty appalling. So, so what does that tell you just at a psychological level about fear in general? If this isn't driven by science and people hear things on the media and then suddenly, they say, okay, yes, please lock me in my house. Please keep me in a mask forever. Please keep me not going to holidays with my family. Just psychologically, what it, has that unearthed anything that maybe you thought wasn't as well, intense? I, I, think, I think the thing that surprised me the most probably was how rapidly we stampeded to imitate a totalitarian state in the immediate aftermath of the release of COVID. Now, you know, if you think it through a little bit, no one really knew how serious the virus was going to be. And so it was an unknown threat. And so you can imagine a herd of animals or a school of fish for, for that matter, because this kind of phenomena is universal throughout the animal kingdom. The cost of overreacting to a threat is generally minimal compared to underreacting to a real threat, right? Overreacting to a hypothetical threat is cheap compared to underreacting to an actual threat. Because if you underreact, you can die. Whereas if you overreact, you generally just get tired for a minute. So a herd will stampede because the most neurotic member of the herd jumps first, and then they'll instantly follow them. And that's kind of what we did in the early stages of the pandemic. The Chinese acted first. Now, unfortunately, they are a totalitarian state, and we all followed. And that's excusable in some sense, because we didn't know what sort of threat we were facing. But then the, the breakdown, it's really appalling in Canada, the breakdown of our, our rights, let's mm -hmm. say, for mobility, uh, for freedom of speech, etc. It's particularly grating to me in the Canadian context, because way back in the 80s, 
Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, our current Prime Minister's father, who was quite an intellectual, he was very enamored of French civil law, and he grafted a Bill of Rights on top of the Canadian federal common law structure, essentially. And I, I didn't like that at all. I thought that was a bastardization of a great English common law tradition. I'm not a fan of Bills of Rights, because they're predicated on the idea that you have a finite set of rights and that the social contract awards them to you or the government. Mm -hmm. And I think that's backwards. It's like, you have all the rights there are except those that are expressly forbidden by detailed legislation that mostly was generated from the bottom up. That's the English common law tradition. Anyways, everybody celebrated the Bill of Rights. Aren't you protected? Oh my God, we, all our rights are protected now forever. You know, it was Pierre Trudeau's major accomplishment, hypothetically. Now we have his son and it's like, yeah, what's it good for? My, my father isn't vaccinated. He decided not to, partly because they were telling him he had to. And he has his other reasons. Um, I have family members who aren't vaccinated for health reasons, who also had COVID twice and didn't really feel they needed to be vaccinated again. In any case, um, it's extraordinarily annoying to see this happening. And uh, to then find out that there's nothing behind it except like the most instrumental and cowardly random polling is extremely disheartening and also maddening and also angering all of those things at once. Do, and you, do you think it's possible that the polling is out of whack too? I mean, you've, been, you, you've been doing polling forever, right? I mean, this is, this is one of, of the things Of course it's out yeah. of whack. Jesus Christ, you know, I mean, how do you get accurate polling data? Well, okay, over what time frame? You're gonna poll every day? How about every hour? How about every minute? Every week, every two weeks? Who answers the phone calls when you do the polls? How did you construct the questions? Are you eliciting a particular kind of answer because you paid insufficient attention to the way the question was posed? Et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's not guidance from the polls. It's, it's a quasi-informed random walk, which is a lot easier than thinking it through. But to, to see that happening in spite of the much vaunted protection for our rights, like, you know, Canadians who aren't vaccinated now cannot leave the country. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Why, why is that? And I'm, look, I got vaccinated and people took me to task for that. And I thought, all right, I'll get the damn vaccine. Here's the deal, guys. I'll get the vaccine. You fucking leave me alone. And did that work? No. So st stupid me. You know, that's how I feel about it. It's like, well, now I have to get tested for COVID when I come back into Canada. I have to get tested before I leave Canada. Now, you know, that might be the latter issue. That's an issue with the Americans. And, and so that's outside of the Canadian purview. But the restrictions to get back into Canada are even more stringent. It's like, well, why do you get the vaccine then if you're not going to leave me alone? And I don't think the evidence that unvaccinated or that vaccinated people are less contagious, let's say, I don't think it's very compelling. Yeah. So why are the vaccinated all of a sudden, the unvaccinated all of a sudden a danger? And I certainly don't understand the push to get children vaccinated. I think that's, I think that's, I think that's absolutely reprehensible. And I also can't figure out, Norman Deutsch wrote a piece in Tablet called Needle Points. And one of the things he pointed out was that if you take the top 25 least trusted institutions um, in that group, the most distrusted institutions include Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. And for good reason, and he details out the lawsuits that Big Pharma has had to pay because of misbehavior on, on their part, broadly speaking, multiple companies over the last 20 years. And they're the biggest lawsuits in American history, which is really saying something because your court system is set up so that big lawsuits are really possible. Right. And so I see the, the leftists, all of a sudden, it's like Big Pharma. Yeah, trust them. It's like, what? 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 Really? You guys? This is, I don't understand that at all, like, and psychologically. So what's going on here? It's like, well, I think the underlying phenomena is something like, phenomenon is something like, well, as long as it's for health and safety, it's always good. And, you know, not to get conspiratorial here, but the same damn thing is going to happen with the climate change push. Absolutely. They're already, Absolutely. Re, it's already being reconfigured as, well, it's the biggest public health issue of our time. It's like, no, I don't think so. I think overreaching bureaucrats are the biggest health, uh, what would you say, the biggest challenge to our health of our time.
If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.